Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Today is 21st of January 2020 I'll recite inshallah from the beginning of Surah Sabah Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Alladhi Lahu Ma Fi Samawati Wa Ma Fi Al-Ardi Wa Lahu Alhamdu Fi Al-Akhirati Wa Huwa Al-Hakim Al-Khabir يعلم ما يلج في الأرض وما يخرج منها وما ينزل من السماء وما يعرج فيها وهو الرحيم الغفور وقال الذين كفروا لا تأتين الساعة قل بلى وربي لا تأتينكم عالم الغيب لا يعزب عنه مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض وقال الذين كفروا لا تأتين الساعة قل بلى وربي لا تأتين نكم عالم الغيب لا يعزب عنه مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض ولا أصغر من ذلك ولا أكبر إلا في كتاب مبين ليجزي الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك لهم مغفرة ورزق كريم والذين سعوا في آياتنا معاجزين أولئك لهم عذاب من رجز أليم ويرى الذين أوتوا العلم الذي أنزل إليك من ربك هو الحق ويهدي إلى صراط العزيز الحميد Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his praise extends geographically, extends over time, extends over places. His praise is everywhere because His bounty is everywhere. Samawat, heavens, the earth, now, in the past, in the future. And His praise will manifest also in the day of judgment. His praise will manifest in the day of judgment. And he is the most wise, he is the expert, his knowledge knows no bound, no bound. So the combination of knowledge with mercy, with wisdom, these, these are the things that makes a person perfect. We have situations where there is knowledge but there is evil intention there is no mercy and you use this knowledge to build innovative weapons and robots to create to destroy mankind to destroy and harm the environment so this is not something to be praised for Allah he has knowledge with mercy he has sent down books which clearly is guidance for the mankind. So we have to praise Allah for that. That his knowledge comes combined with hikmah, with mercy. Hakim, Khabir, Rahim. The next ayah says Rahim al Ghafur. He is the merciful. He is the one who lo loves to for forgive. So observing the knowledge of Allah along with such kind of asma and sifat, Allah's good names and attributes, is very much essential in terms of boosting the iman in, an, in our heart. And you feel some kind of a harmony with the surroundings, with the nature, because we all belong to the one kingdom. And the king is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has these qualities. Ar-Rahim Al-Ghafoor Then Allah mentions the, the non-believers that they said with much assurance that the, the, the hour will not come meaning that if we die nobody is gonna raise up again that's the end of it so that means the non-believers, they are confined to this world. Hence, the materialistic view. The materialistic view 
of everything is in this world, nothing beyond it. This view is the one that is killing the mankind this time. In our, comp in, in our, in our time, this is the view that is killing the mankind and filling their heart with arrogance. With a little bit of science and technology they got, they started to distance themselves from those kind of ghaib, unseen. The little bit of science and technology the mankind got, and by that I mean the West basically, uh, it has created into them some kind of an arrogance. So, so this feeling of Nietzsche's Superman type of feeling and over romanticism and confidence on the science and technology made people kill God, say that he is dead and it is our world and let's triumph this world, it's one life, let's live it, let's enjoy it, there is nothing beyond. The kafirin say la ta'atina sa'a. The hour is not gonna come. So let's enjoy this world. There is no accountability. This is our age. This is the new age. This is the postmodernism. Everything that is solid melts into air. Let's enjoy this life. So Allah is saying to the Prophet, tell them. I swear by God it is gonna come and Allah is the one who has the knowledge of the unseen. So it's very essential that we we bring the unseen into the equation because the materialistic equation is not gonna it, it's creating lots of questions. It's creating a spiritual void. It's creating like uh, a situation like when you bring a fish out of the water, it's lacking something. If you want to explain this materialistic world and this hedonistic rush behind the, behind the wine and sex and luxury and just hayatul dunya only, we saw the ugliness of it. We already saw the ugliness of it when, when the heart is devoid of the spirituality and the metaphysical elements, people will not be able to continue. So the pure rationalistic thing without the drop, drops of spirituality, it's not going to come, it's not going to solve. And people realize this once and twice and so many times. The West themselves, they realized this and that's why whenever there was very rationalistic, dry, rationalistic view, there was a counter movement from the romantic side. Now this romantic side tries to sometime fill this romance with some kinds of spiritual things, some kinds of unseen things from again from the nature or from this world and from a history from sometimes of a cultural attachment to your old heritage, maybe some monsters and Vikings and some. So people try to resort to some kind of unexplained things because that gives some kind of uh, some kind of soothing and uh, some kind of explanation and meaning for life. And it's like. Uh, fish is suffocating outside the water and you just spray some water and that gives him some kind of a feeling of of easiness so whenever in the middle of this spiritual dryness you you drop some kind of ghosts and fairies and Disney World and things like that for sure it's gonna and Harry Potter and magic and these things it's going to give some kind of um, an euphoric, utopic feeling to, the, to this poor soul of human beings.
okay and this has been the history of humankind from ancient times okay but but soon you realize that you are attaching to a wrong spiritual sources and the real source is what the quran now says that there is the ultimate alimul ghaib he is the one who has the knowledge of the unseen and he has created the unseen and he is the source of the mystical things that we don't we are unable to explain but these are not dragons and fires and aliens and monsters this is rahim this is merciful this is ghafoor okay so so the conclusion is that we need to cling to some kind of metaphysical spiritual utopic reference so while since we need that reference let's not cling to false references of ghosts and things like that let's cling to a reference that is the real source which is said in the quran and in in these verses لا يعزب عنه مثقال ذرة في السماوات ولا في الأرض ولا أصغر من ذلك ولا أكبر إلا في كتاب مبين. Nothing escapes his knowledge. Small, big, uh, in the autumn when a leaf is falling, he knows about it. A dead seed is sprouting into a plant, he knows about it. Asghar or Akbar, small or big, it doesn't escape his knowledge. Kullun fi kitab mubin. It's not only that escapes his knowledge, means that knowledge that is confined within himself. It's even he has written down a copy of this gigantic big data. People talk about big data. If you talk about big data, here is the big data. That everything small, big, since the inception of this creation until the day of judgment it's written somewhere in a lawha mahfuz kitab mubin and it's a clear book so this is the big data and it's not a, an entertainment or a wonder world and things that you just enjoy yourself these are tied with accountability these things are tied with accountability so it's not I mean, it's not worth taking risk that, okay, I'm in a win-win side, let's just experiment. It's like a Disneyland, let me just go and come out, it's an entertainment. No, this world, everything is written down and will be held accountable. But it's just one life that we are living. If we die, the, the registry is closed, so, so... Uh, there won't be a second chance. Those who have righteous deeds after they had clear ideology. So the clear knowledge with belief that translates into deeds. This is what is required. This is what is required. And these are the one who's going to get the reward on the day of judgment but those who oppose they took this world as the only world there is nothing beyond it and they thought that there won't be any kind of accountability after the death and hence lead a hedonistic life worrying nothing this gonna suffer suffer a punishment so let's our arm ourselves with the knowledge that is answering big questions the knowledge that is answering big questions and is never conflicting with rational thinking it's satisfying the heart as well as it's satisfying the mind and this is the quran the message that covers everything Let's give it a try, give it a thinking, and then decide yourself and let the fish be.
be back to water. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.